Uh, we are still waiting for the for Doctor Professor Ipp. Good morning, Professor IPP. You already with us now. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, so, uh, Pak Deputi. Silahkan, kalau dimulai aja, Mbak. Yeah, thank you. Ada cara lainnya. Yeah. So, everyone, uh, we, <coughs> we are about to begin the agenda. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning, Italy. So, uh, welcome to the webinar of the detection and warning of tsunamis generated by volcano activities. And before proceeding to the main agenda, allow me to share the background of this webinar. Uh, as we had learned recently from the Krakatau event in 2018 that generated a tsunami, it had reminded us that uh, Indonesia has a potential hazard due to the local, due to the volcano. So for that reason, the Indonesia tsunami early warning system now is in the stage of initial development of the non-seismic tsunami early warning system. And regarding to this issue, uh, BMKG has initiative to host a webinar on, on the detection and warning of tsunamis and ge generated by volcano activities. Uh, we are lucky that now we have uh, four uh, perfect presenters from Italy and also from Indonesia. Indonesia. But before we are learn from them, <coughs> uh, the first agenda would be the opening remarks from our deputy of geophysics, Dr. Suko Prayitno Adi. Dr. Suko Prayitno Adi, the floor is yours. Baik, terima kasih. Suara saya terdengar ya. Siapa ya, saya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Excellency Professor Mauricio Ripepe from University of Florence, Italy, and Dr. Alessandro Anosiato, 
Senior Research at Europe Commission. Thank you very much. Doctor Engineering Semedi Usrin, Senior Research Scientist National Agency of Research and Innovation Indonesia. Earthquake and Tsunami Center, Bapak Dr. Taryono. Acting Head of Engineering, Seismology, Geopotential, Time Code, and All Webinar Participants. A very good morning to all of you. On behalf of the Republic Indonesia Agency for Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysics, it is indeed a great pleasure for me to greet all you in conjunction with the webinar of detection and warning of tsunami generated by volcano activities. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are aware, Indonesia is located in the global ring of fire and coal cause of the volcanic tsunami. Just as we learned in 20 December, 22 December 2009, 2008, Indonesia was hit by destructive Krakatau volcanic eruption caused by devastating tsunami affected to coastal part of Sunda Straits. Subsequent, the excess extensions of the non-tectonic tsunami early warning system is necessity to enable to use safe life. So it is in that our responsibility to build our capacity to able to timely inform the coastal communities at risk of the possible non-tectonic tsunami threat. The site of Krakatau, on the last year, a large eruption of the Hunga Tonga volcano was occurred on the evening at 15 January, caused the non-tectonic tsunami and as fall in Tonga. The eruption was one of the biggest in Tonga in the past 30 years. The MKG organized this virtual discussion in fighting for speaker from Mauricio Ripepe from University of Florence, Italia, Italia, with talk the topic tsunami warning system for Stromboli. Dr. Alexandro Annunciato, senior research at Europe Commission, will talk the topics tsunami detection and algorithm and algorithm. And Dr. Engineering Semedi Husrin, Senior Research Scientist, National Agency Research and Innovation Indonesia. We'll talk the IDCL from Krakatau late update and key performance. And Januar Arifin, Magister Science, will talk the development of INA tsunami non-tectonic in Indonesia. Sure, the topic will offer topic detection, warning, dissemination perspective, and enhance community preparedness to deal with the volcano generated tsunami event. Due to the facts, managing and improving tsunami warning system require effective governance mechanism and policies at the national and international level. The main objective of this virtual discussion is to advance advancing tsunami preparedness and early warning system in Indonesia. And I believe this discussion is of more important for communities to strengthen in the context of non-tectonic tsunami warning mitigation system in Indonesia. We will learn tsunami generated by volcano activities as the challenge and self-evaluation through prepare the future underwater volcanic 
Asset through coordination and collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end the, my remark by thanking the Earthquake and Tsunami Center for talking this important initiative. I wish you successful and productive discussion as through international cooperation, we can stand strong together in mitigating, wielding, preparedness, and reducing the risk of tsunami threats. On behalf of the BMKG, the webinar of detection and warnings of tsunami generated by volcano activities is official open. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Supo Prayatno Adi, our deputy of geophysic of BMKG, for delivering the opening remarks and also for making this webinar possible for us so we can learn from the from the experts. Uh, <clears throat> Before proceeding to the main agenda, I would like to invite all of the participants to have a photo session. So please turn on your camera uh, because we are still have our deputy and the experts. Uh, I believe our deputy has another agenda. He's very busy. <clears throat> please, uh, Mas Bowo, you could... Pak Yanuar, Pak Yanuar, belum tampil Pak Yanuar. Bu Suci hitung aja Bu nanti saya capture. Oke. Okay. I will count in three. One, two, three. Give your best smile please. Again. One, two, three. How many slide? Still? Three Bu. Yeah. One. Once more. Two, three. Again, okay, so it's done. It's Thank already you. done. Thank you very much, everyone. So <clears throat> let's proceed to the main agenda. It's the presentation from the four presenters. Uh, for this session, I would like to uh, ask our colleague, Mr. Muhammad Hafiz Givari, that should that would be our moderator for the present presentation session. Hafiz, I turn to you. Thank you, Madam Suchi, for the amazing introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, that I am sure that we're going to have an amazing webinar, given the interesting topic that we have. I'm your moderator for today's webinar. My name is Muhammad Hafiz Gifari. You can call me Hafiz. This webinar is made possible by the collaboration of BMKG and the University of Florence. Before going on to the main presentation, I'm going to present our tentative agenda for today. Masbo, can you please show it to us? So the first one, we're going to have a presentation by Professor, sorry, Dr. Maurizio Ripepe. Sorry, Professor Maurizio Ripepe from Florence University of Italy about the tsunami warning system for Stromboli Elastic Beacon on 1420 until 1450. And then we're going, we're going to move on to uh, Dr. Alessandro Annunziato from former member of the GRC of the European Commission. Uh, He's going to present about the tsunami detection algorithm by IDSL. And then we're going to move on again to Dr. Engineer Samedi Hussein from BRIN, our National Research and Innovation Center, uh, entitled IDSL for Krakatau, latest update and key performances. And then for the last speaker, we're going to have Mr. Januar Arifin from BMKG, that we're gonna talk about the development of INA TNT, or Indonesian Tsunami Early Non-Tectonics Warning System. And then at the last session, we're gonna have a discussion session, and then it's gonna be closed again by, uh, not again, sorry, by uh, the head of the Center of Earthquake and Tsunami, Tsunami Center, uh, Dr. Dariono. 
Okay, uh, without further ado, I'm going to present the CV of our first presenter, which is Professor Maurizio Ripepe. Can you please uh, show it to us, Mas Bo? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, firstly, before going on to the presentation, I'm going to explain a bit the webinar rules. The first one is that during the presentation, every participant is required to mute their microphone. The second one, that the discussion session will be held after all of the presentations are delivered. And the third one is that for participants who would like to ask questions, you could do so by raising the hand as well as typing your question on the chat column. If you want to ask directly, you can certainly raise the hand. Okay, I'm going to present the CV of Ma the Professor Maurizio Ripepe. Masbo, can you please? Professor Maurizio Ripepe has a lot of experiences. He has been featured in the uh, New York Times and many others. There are a lot of experience that, in, that he, he had. We cannot put them all in one column, uh, but one of them is external professor at Open University in the UK, in the US also at the University of Southern California. And then moving on to uh, his, his home, home country in the Italy, University of Florence or Firenze. And then lecturer also in geophysics and seismology at the University of Camerino and Siena, also in Italy. And then affiliate researchers at the Earthquake Research Institute or ERI in Tokyo, Japan. So worldwide experience and then his expertise, including seismology, falconic seismology, acoustics, ground deformation and numerical modeling. He was also, uh, the professor in geophysics and physical volcanology, and his organizations, including the, uh, the res responsibility for the Laboratory of Experimental Geophysics, or LGS, of Florence University since 2003, uh, specialized in Stromboli and Etna volcanoes. Uh, without further ado, can you please test your microphone, Professor Pepe? I hope I pronounced that your name right. Yep, I think it's great. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to present the stage to you. The time is yours, Professor. Okay, um, I'm I'm going to take uh, probably the video out. My my video out because uh, connection seems to be very poor today here. So oh no problem. Uh, anyway, no problem. Yeah. Okay. I, otherwise, I keep it on, and in case uh, I will switch it off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I think it's okay if we're gonna still hear your voice. You can try share your screen now. Yes. I do believe that you, you you do have the permission already. I think so. Do you yep. see the screen? We have not, unfortunately. Can you oh. try again? <sighs> okay, I try again. Do you see the screen? We have not. Uh, Masbo, can you please uh, make sure that Pak Ripepe has already the share screen feature? I think you had already, right, Professor? I think so. Yeah. Uh, could you yeah. send your presentation? You can send, yeah. That's, in the chat room. that's a great suggestion, Madam Suchi. You can okay. send the file, and then we're gonna we're gonna present it for you. Um, I will I will try again. Okay. Do you see? Him? Yeah, I think. Oh, it's it's just you. It's just oh, your face. Yeah. 
<laughs> not your presentation. Sorry. Can I try again? Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're already seeing that. It's still loading though. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry. Are you somewhere remote, Professor? What pardon? Let me. Are, are you somewhere I... remote so that your co connection is not that good? Exactly. This is uh, this is the problem. I'm. I'm yeah. Not, I do not have a very good connection. I Which think. Can I, do, I think. Oh yeah. Even now, you don't see it. Even now, it's just loading, but it's not showing. I think you you gotta send your presentation to us, professor. Okay, we're gonna present it for you. Is, yeah, it's better if we if Alessandro, professor, that Annunciato yes. starts and I send the yes. link to you. Yes, I think Otherwise, that's all. Oh yeah, yeah. Too much time. that might be the alternative. So I will present. Uh, Professor uh, Alessandro's TV first again. Masbo, can you please uh, show Professor, sorry, Dr. Alessandro's CV so that I can present to, yep. Okay then, so mostly narration. So a lot of experiences of Dr. Alessandro Annunziato. He was the former member of the GRC of the EU or the former Joint Research Center of the European Union. A lot of experiences that he had, uh, one of them are nuclear engineer, graduated from the Rome University and then also worked at nuclear reactor till Mahadur safety for 10 years next. After the large Sumatra event also changed to work at tsunami modeling on the DRR section, sector, and then also responsible for the EU European, Uni European Union Crisis Management Laboratory at the GRC. And then next, in the frame of the global disaster alerts, also he acted as a responsible and chairman of the steering committee for several years. And lastly, he invented and developed the tsunami related instrumentation and alerting systems, such as an expensive device for sea level measurement or IDSL, installed in about 50 stations in the Mediterranean Sea and Indonesia, and the tsunami alerting device or TAD for a quick alerting and information of on ongoing events. Without further ado, can you uh, please test your microphone first? Dr. Anunziato. Hi. Can you hear me? I think I can hear you perfectly, doctor. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen. Yeah. The stage is yours. Can you see my screen? We can, we can, we can. Okay. It's good. perfect, yeah. Eventually, Maurizio, you can send me the presentation via WhatsApp and I can present it from here. Going to. Yeah, that will be okay. easier. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, it's very pleasure for me to, to attend this meeting and to, to make this presentation. And uh, let's say I will describe the what we call the tsunami detection algorithm that, that is inside the IDSL devices. I will uh, mention what is the problem. I thought that Maurizio was presenting before me, so it was very clear what was, but just to uh, quickly uh, identify, the problem is the identification of a tsunami event, because uh, as we said, when you have uh, a seismic event, you have a pre-alert given by the earthquake, but in the case of a volcanic eruption or a landslide, because this can be also another possible uh, reason, you don't have this type of uh, pre-information. Uh, however, let's say till now we know uh, for sure that we have operational volcanic sea level systems like this Stromboli one that uh, Maurizio will present after me, uh, which is operational and working and alerted already, while the Krakatoa that is under development uh, in your country. However, let's say the problem of uh, um, 
early uh, alerting through sea level station. Dr. Anunziato, yes? sorry for interrupting you. Uh, actually, can you please share the slideshow bigger? Um, you can press F5, I, I believe. Uh, yes, yeah, so I did, but it kinda, went. Yeah, yeah the writing did, is kind of kind of small, so. One second. I did, Thank but you. it went on the... Uh, I had a suggestion to, please. You can press F5 or you can press uh, slideshow. Uh, sorry, slideshow and then... I did it, but it went on the yeah, other this screen. one. Slideshow. Uh, from one beginning second. and then from current slide, one I think. Two. From the left side, you can see the current slide. Sorry. That can one. you see now? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. You can Sorry. continue. Yes, I was saying that uh, the sea level identification of uh, an event can also be important for near shore events because in the, in there are cases in which the uh, the source is so close to the coast that uh, the identification of the, and the characterization of the seismic source may happen after uh, the uh, the arrival of the wave. So in some cases, for example, uh, you can take up to five minutes, for example, to identify correctly the seismic source. But in some cases, if the source is so close that the wave arrived less than five minutes, you can have problems. And you could use methods like th those in order to alert also in these other cases. Uh, what is the problem? Okay, the problem is uh, if, if you have a signal like the first one, it is relatively easy because in this case it's a very clear uh, tsunami signal. Uh, there are a number of small waves before and identify this event is uh, relatively simple because there is a, a large difference between the tide component and the tsunami. But in the lower case, for example, uh, this is a case of uh, in Galapagos, for example, this is much more complicated to identify because the signal to noise ratio is much smaller and is not easy to identify. Then, as I said, you have noisy signals. So you have to extract from a noisy signal the information that allows you to identify. Or you can have peaks. For example, all those peaks may uh, represent a problem if you want to uh see the changes in respect to the normal behavior of a signal so uh, in the past there were several methods that were developed or tested in order to identify an event but and here i mentioned a number of them and also in my publication that uh, i published in uh, recently i indicated them uh, but all of them Let's say the only one that uh, was, uh, to my knowledge, operationally used, uh, apart the, the system of Maurizio Ripepe that is a little bit different one, is the NOAA DART buoys that is used uh, in order to increase the frequency of acquisition uh, based on a threshold difference between the signal and the tide estimation. All the others were developed, but were not uh, operationally implemented in any instrument. Our system is uh, based on what we call a uh, difference between uh, short-term and long-term forecasts. And then we compare with the uh, root mean square. Uh, I explain in a, in a moment the system, so suppose that you have a number of uh, points that represent your uh, signal. You can uh, create, let's say, a, a short for forecast and you have the estimation by the forecast that is can be used, uh, uh, for example, either a decimation point or a root mean square point with a, a low number of points. You have the points at the current time. And this is what we call the short term forecast. But then you can use a much longer number of points. And in that case, you have, for example, 300 points in this case. And you can establish what could be the forecast at the current time. And we call this long term forecast. 
then you make the difference between the short-term forecast and the long-term forecast. And this represents your amplitude. So it's the amplitude of your, uh, of your uh, signal. And this uh, signal, uh, this method allows to remove peaks because in the short-term forecast, if you have a peak, you can remove that peak while the long-term forecast give you the long-term behavior. In the past, someone also proposed, for example, NOAA in the DART system, they proposed to use the tide, but the tide you have to know very, very well. And in that case, you can substitute the long-term forecast with the tide. If you have some search, for example, the, the long-term forecast will be much larger. So with this method, you can really follow the behavior independently on what can be the uh, the storm surge in that particular place or even without knowing precisely the tide in that particular location this is not sufficient because let's say you want that this amplitude that is the the amplitude the difference between the those two quantities in absolute terms you want that this is larger than a certain threshold that we call tau but we add also the root mean square of the signal because if you have a noisy signal you don't want that for a very small uh, tau uh, more than the noisy signal then you have an alert so you you multiply the root mean square by a certain factor and then you add to the threshold and this is your uh, value that you want to overpass. So when the value of the amplitude is larger than this value Vs, that is the, uh, the variation of the system, if you want, and also the amplitude is larger than a minimum uh, value, then your alert level increases by one unit. Otherwise, the alert level decreases of one unit and you can uh, limit this alert level to 10 and this is the method that uh, that we use uh, just a tip that those numbers that we call n300 and n30 that is the number of points in reality if you multiply by the interval of acquisition represent the long time and the short time uh, let's say integration time uh, let's make an example uh, so on another type so suppose that this is your uh, original signal and here on the right should be the sort of uh, tsunami case if you take the uh, short term uh, short term uh, forecast you will have the green uh, signal here that follows quite well the, the, the trend but eliminates the individual peaks like at the beginning here. If you take the long-term forecasting, because you use much longer number of points, you tend to follow the trend. Uh, and so uh, let's say you don't follow closely here the, when you have the peak. This means that if you make the difference between uh, those two signals, then you have your amplitude. And you want that the amplitude is larger than four times the root mean square plus uh, a threshold and this at this moment when this happens your alert level will increase of one unit this is uh, the uh, signal that uh, we used uh, for the case of um, marina jambo in the case of uh, krakatoa event of 2018 this was the original the first plot is the original signal the second plot on the right uh, top right is the these forecast 30 and forecast 300 are the two quantities and their difference is uh, in the uh, in the signal below on the bottom right this is the alert level which means that you could have alert in the case of the marina jambu uh, very early few minutes after the arrival of the wave at Marina jump. Of course, if you have much closer instrument, you can alert even more uh, rapidly. Similarly, this was a Pelabuan, uh, Pelabuan similar trend, 
also in this case we uh, we got uh, we could get a, we could have get alert through this mechanism but for example in the case of binuangen the signal was so small that it never overpassed the threshold and so you would not get any alert uh, what is the difference between the uh, LTA SCA and LTF SCF method? This was uh, something that was asked by one of the reviewers, and I explained that in the short term forecast, we need to remove the tie. While in the case of SCA LTA, that is the method that is normally used uh, in uh, uh, seismographic uh, systems. The, the signal normally is uh, constant and you only consider the amplitude while in our case we have to detect uh, to, to exclude the tide in order to have the, the amplitude all of this has been implemented in uh, in a system which is called the sea level machine that we developed uh, uh, before i left uh, jrc and uh, i will leave you the presentation and there are the links that you can access this is a system that collects all the events in the past in which there was a measurement of uh, of uh, of tsunami for example if we take the mexico case 7.6 uh, in uh, 2022 and then you select one specific uh, signal it is the, you have uh, a mask like this in which you can play with uh, the, the numbers with the parameters of the model so you can increase the, for example, the number of points or increase the frequency of the acquisition uh, time. And the, the result is that uh, you calculate, you can calculate those quantities that I have shown. And you can, in that way, you can also uh, characterize and calibrate your quantities that then you can implement in a, in a real system. Okay, those are the parameters that you can, can modify uh, in the model. Uh, this is the Rakat Island. Probably it will be shown uh, later by uh, Semedi. And uh, let's say let's say everything has been implemented inside the IDSL. So those models are present in the IDSL. So I show you now a number of cases in which we have uh, identified an event. This was uh, for example, a 2018 event in uh, in Italy, and the Le Castella device here is the red curve here in the in the pin in the middle, identified the event uh, and identified also the, the alert. Uh, in the this was the rather interesting Tonga event. It was uh, uh, sorry, this is 2021, not 2022. Uh, it was already mentioned uh, uh, before. Uh, in this particular case, the IDSL of uh, Prigi uh, identified the event because and also sent out uh, alerts. We used in the IDSL the alert in order to increase the frequency of the acquisition of the webcam. Unfortunately, it was night, but due to this alert, the webcam was able to detect the change of the level is nice so it's not very well visible but you can see that the level in this case is lower than before uh, before the event and also it sent out uh, an sms and an email to the subscribers at this moment there are only few subscribers to the system and uh, let's say and it sent out uh, timely this this type of alert However, let's say we have to consider also false alerts because uh, in some cases you can have a peak. For example, this is a case that I remember where, in which you have a peak and the system is not able to filter out this uh, individual peak. And so you have an alert. Then if you zoom, you see that the high value was maintained for a few uh, cycles. And this is the reason why one individual peak is not excluded by the by the system. For this reason, when you install a system like this based on sea level, you need to have more than one uh, more than one uh, device in order in order to uh, guarantee that there is not a false alert. This is the case. One example 
a boat can be below one device, you have an alert, while if you have another one that does not give an alert, this is a no alert. While if both of them have an alert, probably it is a real event. Uh, the, this mechanism, as I said, is implemented in the uh, IDSL devices. So all our station communicate through internet and put the data into the, the server. But the same method can be used uh, also uh, remotely in the sense that we, for example, there is some noise. So if someone can close the mic, please. Um, so um, we use also this method of uh, uh, running uh, the computer code that calculates the alert for several uh, events at this moment, including uh, idea cells. And this can be done either through uh, reading the C level from other sources. For example, we read all the C level from BIG and we cal compute the, uh, calculate and compute the alert in a separate uh, uh, remote machine uh, uh, organized by GRC. And then the signals are then stored in our that server. So this means that you don't need to install the mechanism, the, the computer algorithm inside the instrument, even if it is, the, in my opinion, the best solution. You can also compute the same uh, procedure and the same algorithm in real time uh, by reading continuously and calculating and storing them into a, into a system like that or using for providing an alert. So uh, in conclusion, uh, this uh, tsunami detection model that has been included in the IDSL proved to be useful uh, for non-earthquake related events and has been, as I said, applied in the C-11 machine application. The same software can be used with uh, whichever device provided that an online analysis is performed. And the application uh, to several past events can be appreciated in the C11 machine. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, this is the, the addresses for both for the software. So we can distribute, we are distributing the software uh, that is in the DSL in this GitHub system and also the address for accessing the C11 machine. And this uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anunziato. There are a lot of uh, interesting points that you have presented in your presentations. I'm only going to mention maybe two of it. The first one is perfecting the value in the equation needed to produce the alert level on the tsunami alerting model integration of the long and the short-term forecast. The algorithm of the tsunami detection was basically done by making an adjustment between short-term forecast and the long-term forecast. That is represented by the amplitude and compared to the RMS or the root mean square. And the second one is that the false alert of the IDSL need to be considered. We need multiple devices at each location as a redundant measure redundancy in the case of failure of one device, as well as to avoid false alarm. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anunziato. Is there anything that you maybe want to add more to our No, I think that uh, the, the, the other maybe key point is that uh, uh, you can use uh, this method also out of the uh, instruments for any other instrument and in okay. that way you so need not to, limited. to make uh, yeah 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 okay sure. thank you very much dr Anujeto. uh okay then we're gonna move on to uh professor ipp have you already received the uh the file from professor ipp dr Anunziato? no no yet. no it not was yet. not uh, so maybe you want to try again i professor? try again <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So if you, we never try, we never know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's perfect this time. Yeah. 
Really? Can you please? Yeah, really, really. Are you kidding? Are you, are you oh, that that's... surprised? <laughs> that's are you that surprise surprised because of the community. poor connection? <laughs> it's yeah. actually very good. Yeah, it's looking good. No, you, yeah. you see, you see everything. I'm oh. seeing everything. The clouds, okay. everything. It's okay, so let's let's start uh, quickly with uh, motivation. Okay. Stacy sure. Uh, yeah. What? Pardon? I think I think that's all for me. You can continue your tour presentation. The time is yours. Okay, I start. Thank you. Do I start? You can you can start now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, let's start uh, quickly with the motivation of this. Uh, Tsunami early warning system we have developed at Stromboli. Just a few words about Stromboli. Probably many of you already know Stromboli. It's a volcano in the middle of the southern Tyrrhenian area. So um, it's uh, almost one kilometer, 926 meters high. It stands above the sea level, but most of the volcano is underwater. We have almost uh, 2,000 meters of um, volcano underwaters. Uh, the main problem of this volcano is uh, that one flank, as most of the volcanoes, are unstable. So the risk associated, the tsunami risk is associated to the sh what uh, you can see here is the Shara del Fuoco. A slope that uh, it becomes unstable when activity uh, increases. Um, the potential collapse of the Shard of Fuoco is uh, uh, almost uh, 1,000 millions of cubic meter of cubic uh, meters. And the last large collapse of Shard of Fuoco, you can see the volcano which stands outside the water and the volcano that is below the sea, sea level. Uh, the last large collapse happened in the Roman age, almost 2,000 years ago. Um, then in, 2000, in December 2002, so just uh, 20 years ago, uh, a small flank collapse, only 10 million of cubic meters collapsed and generated almost 10 meters of tsunami wave. Uh, at this time, fortunately, it was December and there were very few people, but uh, uh, the inundation was almost 200 meters in inland. You can see people escaping while the water of the seawater uh, is getting on the coast. And uh, of course, this is not uh, um, the problem only of Stromboli, uh, because Stromboli is only uh, 60 kilometers from the Italian coast. So if the tsunami or the collapse uh, will be uh, larger than 10 cubic meters, uh, 10 million cubic meters, then will be a big problem also for the Italian coast. And uh, so there are two motivations for a tsunami uh, warning system. The first one is a very short time. So uh, to reach the, the coast of Stromboli, the tsunami will need only three minutes, but to reach the coast of Italy will need only 15, 20 minutes. So this is the main reason to develop uh, um, an ad hoc system for tsunami early warning at Stromboli. Uh, just uh, uh, to give you an idea, the last uh, partial sector collapse was 700 years ago in uh, between um, 13th and 14th century. And it was more or less 200 millions of cubic meters. And these uh, generated damages and uh, victims also in the Napoli Gulf, which is uh, 200 kilometers from, uh, from, from Stromboli. Uh, more or less, those are the numbers that uh, also uh, remind a lot uh, the, the last uh, event at Anak Krakatau in 2018. Uh, Anak Krakatau is, uh, as you know, is only 50 kilometers from uh, the, other, the other islands, and it took 30 minutes to reach um, all the coast of the area around Anak Krakatau. So um, we developed uh, this tsunami early warning system, which is mainly based on elastic beacons. Uh, elastic beacons, uh, I will show you now what elastic beacons is. Uh, it's a, it actually stands above the water by um, between nine and 12 meters. Uh, the elastic beacons is not a pole fixed at the ground uh, because as a sinker, uh, more or less 20 tons sinker, 
Then uh, uh, the sinker has uh, a cable, is anti-torque cables of um, almost eight centimeters of diameter. So you can see a diver that is uh, uh, maintaining the, um, is working on, uh, on the cable. And then there is a structure. This is a metallic structure and a long steel pipe of 23 meters. And, and the, the whole structure uh, stands above the water because there is a buoy. This buoy is uh, between 10 and 14 uh, meters below the sea, the sea level. This is the buoy. It's a very large buoy, it's three meters by two meters uh, of diameter, 2.5 meters of diameter. And this stays, uh, as you can see here, between 10 and 13 uh, meters below the water. So this is uh, the main element that keeps the all structures uh, uh, above the water. Uh, above the water, we have a turret, and on the turret, we have all the all the, um, the instruments. So we have a solar panels, batteries, and we use a normal seismic digitizer, GURAP, 24 bits, seven channels, and we do a sampling rate of 100, uh, 25 hertz. We have also five ambiental uh, channels for uh, for for light and uh, also for tilt. We have two tilt, uh, mem tilt, just to check uh, the behavior of the structures. And we have also one photo resistors to monitor that the light of these uh, structures is always on. Um, so this is uh, this is uh, the elastic uh, this is the elastic beacons. Uh, we have a cables and the, the elastic beacons has uh, two sensors. So one sensor is just below the buoy at 14 meters, and the other one is uh, attached to the sinker at uh, 46 meters below the sea the sea level. Yeah, those are pressure sensors. And they have, uh, you can also measure the temperature of the water, the current, and uh, all the ambient, um, marine ambient uh, uh, parameters. Uh, so those are developed by Hydromar. Uh, and uh, we measure, the, the as, as I said, the pressure sensor is um, um, sample at 125 hertz and the temperature at only one, one hertz. So each buoy, each elastic beacons has. Uh, um, has the two sensors and also at the summit has two different radio transmitters uh, just uh, for redundancy of the um, of the signal. So to install it, you need, of course, to install one of these structures, you need uh, a large, uh, large uh, boat and uh, you need roughly between two, three days to, to, to install one of them. You see the last one, which stands almost 12 meters above the sea level in front of the shore of the flock. Um, so why elastic beacons? Because the sea condition are very rough in front of Stromboli. And uh, you can see this is uh, the elastic beacons, which is uh, nine meters be up, up, uh, out of the water. And you can see waves of, of nine meters high almost covering the, the elastic beacons. So uh, we have those uh, so very rough conditions in front of the shard the Foco, and this structure is standing there since 2008. Um, so um, why uh, elastic beacons and why 46 meters? Uh, essentially, tsunami generated by volcanoes are a little bit different from tsunami generated by earthquakes, uh, mainly in terms of period of the wave. Uh, the the the, modeled, uh, the models uh, of the tsunami generated by Stromboli is predicting according if the landslide is uh, uh, above the sea or below the sea are predicting a period between 50 and 100 seconds and you can see the simulation at the tube buoy uh, so such period are much shorter than the, the period of earthquakes and if we compare, for example, to with the period uh, of the Anakra Katao tsunami, you see that also the period was quite short. It was uh, 120 seconds. So, um, and this uh, this period uh, is not uh, linked to the volume, but more to the velocity of. Uh, 
to the velocity of the landslide uh, running into the sea, impacting into the sea. So uh, for this reason, um, we decide to have a sensor at the, uh, 46 meters because uh, as you know, the dispersion of the water is uh, filtering uh, the period. And uh, if, uh, for example, if you have a, a sensor between 14 and 43 meters, uh, you are uh, um, filtering quite well the sea waves, but you are not filtering the tsunami wave. If you put the instruments uh, uh, deeper than, uh, than uh, 43 or let's say 100 meters, for example, at 1000 meters, you see that uh, the tsunami waves generated by a volcano will be attenuated between five and 65%. So uh, 50, between 50 and let's say 100 meters is the maximum uh, uh, depth that you can uh, have a sensor. So you can have a sensor which is uh, attenuating this, uh, the, 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 the sea wave of the surface, but it's not attenuating the tsunami wave. And this is a quite critical point. Uh, if, you, if you look at this example, you see uh, uh, there is a rough sea at the surface, but these uh, rough sea conditions are uh, the filtered naturally by the, the, the thickness uh, of the water. At uh, 40, 46 meters, um, you have only uh, 50 centimeters. Uh, if, uh, if at the surface you have five meters waves. Uh, then you can apply an extra numerical filters at your uh, at your signal to reduce uh, those 50 centimeters to five centimeters at uh, uh, 46 meters. So at the end, at uh, using the sensor which is at uh, 46 meters, you have uh, a signal which is uh, which has a very high signal to noise level. Um, this is why we applied to the signal recorded at 46 meters that STA-LTA ratio. Uh, by trial and error, um, trial and error, it means that we tested with different periods between 50 and uh, 200 seconds, which is the best uh, uh, average, which is the best ratio for STA-LTA. And uh, for Stromboli, we found that this is, uh, will be the best one will be around 20. Uh, with 20, uh, we have a good resolution to detect tsunami few seconds, just few seconds after the onset, because this is the target. The target for us is not uh, is to deliver an alert before the tsunami is completely uh, developed. Because uh, if you consider that the that, 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 that tsunami has uh, uh, 180 seconds of period, for example, this is our already three minutes. And the three minutes is comparable with the propagation time of the tsunami from the source to the cost. So we failed if we, if we, if we give an alert uh, after the tsunami has been recorded. So the, the main task is to give an alert before the tsunami is fully, it's fully developed. And uh, uh, with this ratio, STA, LTA, uh, we see that we can give a few seconds after the onset, uh, the alert for a tsunami between 50 and 120, 180 seconds of period. Uh, we did a test also with different uh, sea condition, calm condition and storm condition. And uh, as you can see, in both cases, uh, uh, the, the difference is only a few seconds of delay uh, between calm condition and uh, storm conditions. Uh, we did also a test of uh, this uh, STA-LTA uh, ratio threshold with different tides. So we assume uh, uh, we are recording tides in Mediterranean, which are about uh, 50 centimeters. And uh, we simulate tides uh, like in Indonesia, large tides uh, up to two meters. And you can see the STA LTA, this LTA, STA LTA for the two, uh, for the two in two, in, the, in those two tides condition are exactly the same. So STA LTA, is not affected by, by tide for tsunami generated by volcano, of course. Uh, 
Um, so which is uh, the resolution of uh, the detection algorithm, at least for the Mediterranean conditions? So we tested the, for five years of recording of waves, and uh, you can see that the minimum tsunami amplitude in the worst sea condition will be 40 centimeters. So this means that we can pick a tsunami at 40 centimeters before the tsunami is fully de developed. In the normal sea conditions, which is which are common by the 50% of the cases, uh, the tsunami that can be recorded and detected before it's developed, it's only 10 centimeters. Um, this is the early one flow charts. We use two tsunami, both tsunami gauge. The data are, uh, uh, of course, are oversampled. This spike, just to, to take uh, out uh, possible uh, uh, noises, then uh, uh, are decimated to one second. We apply the filter just to increase the uh, the the. Um, the a signal to noise ratio, and then we calculate the STLTA. Uh, once we have a, a positive uh, results from both buoy, then we give an alert. The alert is sent to the uh, uh, to the Italian civil defense, which uh, is in charge of uh, giving the alert by sirens, emails, and SMS. Um, we have sirens. Uh, we have uh, almost 10 sirens on Stromboli and also on the other islands and in, in, on the coast. And those are uh, expected to, to be activated as soon as the early warning system is detecting a tsunami. Um, we have also uh, linked to the system an application. This application has been developed by our group. And uh, you can download it uh, for free from Google Play or Apple Store. Is view uh, or LGS Stromboli, and you can see in real time how the tsunami algorithm is working even now. Um, so let's go to few 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 data. Uh, the first tsunami after 11 years, because I remind you that the first buoy was installed in 2008, so we had to wait 11 years before we were able to record the first tsunami. Was the July 3rd, 2019. There was a huge explosion with the, uh, you can see the plume reach almost six kilometers high. Uh, large pyroclastic flows uh, impacted the sea. And then there was, uh, uh, I, I show you the, the few, few slides. Uh, you see, this is uh, the position of one of the elastic buoy. Uh, you can see the stones bombing, bombing an area in front of the Charlotte de Fuoco of almost one kilometers. And actually, the buoy was uh, bombed uh, during the explosions and then was uh, inside the paraclastic flows. The paraclastic flows uh, impacted the sea at the speed of almost 45.7 meters per second. And then the one buoy was outside uh, the paraclastic flow and one buoy was inside the paraclastic flows. Um, uh, even though uh, we know from this experience that uh, uh, radio transmission was not affected. You can see that uh, the transmission was still okay uh, during the paraclastic flows. But uh, more important, those are the signals recorded by, by the buoy. Those are, are not filtered signals. Those are the original signals recorded directly by, by the tube buoy. Um, it's uh, almost three meters at uh, PDC and uh, almost one meters at uh, PLB, the two, the two elastic beacons. Uh, the, the onset, um, the, the, um, the tsunami was recorded almost one minute after the explosions. And, uh, and uh, then it stops here but not for problem at the last buoys, but for big fires on, on lands that uh, breaks uh, the radar transmissions. Uh, so if you have a two elastic buoy, you can calculate the velocity. And here we calculate velocity of 32 uh, meters per second. But also more important, we can calculate or you can calculate exactly where the source is. And this is quite important for modeling. It's important to know exactly where the uh, impact of the tsunami is if you want to calculate a good uh, um, propagation maps. 
Um, the other point is uh, the the reaction of the system. You see that uh, the uh, at the one buoy the um, the, um, the STL TA algorithm detects the tsunami only six seconds after the onset, so before it has been developed. And at the second buoy, only eleven seconds after the uh, onset. Um, so this is uh, this was the first uh, early detections. Uh, then in uh, August 28, we had another big explosions, another tsunami, and this time we were able to issue an alert. Uh, the eruption was uh, 10, uh, 17, 15, and after almost one minute, uh, the tsunami was recorded by, by the buoy, and the alert was given 50 seconds after the onset of the tsunami and before uh, the tsunami was fully developed. I have to say that after August 2019, uh, the, the activity of Stromboli has changed a lot. Uh, we have a lot of our classic flows uh, quite uh, normally. And uh, just recently we had the several tsunami uh, we recorded in one day 60, more than 60 uh, small mini uh, tsunami uh, produced after the collapse of uh, 10 to the fifth cubic meters of uh, crater collapse. Uh, I show you a few examples of uh, those uh, tsunami at the two buoys. Uh, you see the, the, the waves are more, uh, more or less very similar to each other. And uh, this is uh, on December, and I finish, I conclude with this one. On December of uh, last December, we, uh, we had another tsunami. This time was one meters and half, uh, um, one meters half height. Uh, the collapse of the crater was uh, 15, 18 or 0.2. And after 50 seconds, we recorded at the two buoy uh, the tsunami. And uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know what's happened. Okay. And as you can see, uh, we gave an alert here. Okay. And I don't know why. Okay. And uh, we gave an alert here uh, only, uh, only uh, nine seconds before the maximum and 32 seconds after the, uh, the onset uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, so just to conclude, the tsunami warning system is based on pressure sensor on board the two elastic beacons. Uh, hydrostatic pressure is sampled at 125 hertz, then the spike decimated to down to one second and the low pass filter below 15 seconds just to reduce uh, the effect of the sea waves. Uh, STL TA it's set to be twice the expected sea noise and is able to uh, detect tsunami with period up to 180 seconds before the tsunami is fully uh, developed uh, at the buoy. The detection algorithm issued uh, is able to issue um, warning 50 seconds after the onset and before the tsunami is fully developed. Uh, it's operative since October 2019. Operative means that is linked to the Italian civil defense uh, uh, um, warning procedures. We recorded already five tsunami above one meters and more than 60 tsunami tsunami below one meters and with no false alert. And the two alerts were automatically uh, issued since uh, 2019. And uh, that's it. That's all from my side. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ipipi, for the comprehensive uh, presentations of your activities and the efforts that had been done by yourself and your team. Uh, maybe I'm going to present four or five points about your presentations. Maybe you can add some more. Yeah. Uh, the first one is that the potential collapse of the Sierra del Fuoco had multiple recorded tsunamis, not only caused by the Stromboli. Yeah. It would be very dangerous to the Italian coast. 
and it serves as the main motivation. That's the first one. The second one that they ask Bacon about, about it, there are two, four sensors, two sensors, uh, pressure sensors, say the three and four sensors are also from Idromar, but serves at the temperature sensors. There are two days needed to install the sensor. The three points are the estimation of the sea waves that can be different by the uh, elastic bacon that can be deferred. Uh, and the alert of tsunami needs to be given before the emergence of the tsunami, of course, saving to save lives. And the STA, LTA value with more than 20 is not affected with side for tsunami generated by volcanoes. The fourth one is that uh, the alert is given to the Italian civil defense authorized to spread the alert, given as soon as possible when the equipment is detecting a tsunami. And the application for giving a tsunami occurred after, uh, also, also there, uh, you can download it, um, I believe, uh, sorry, it's that uh, wrong writings, you can know in App Store, I believe in the Play Store also. Uh, it happened after 11 years, I believe, in 2019, July 2019. Uh, they are also on, uh, I think no false alarms have been made, I believe. And then five no. tsunamis had been, yeah, that, that's very great. And then also five tsunamis had been recorded with uh, five alerts, if I'm not yes. mistaken. No, uh, no, you have not, you have not mistaken. I mean, uh, we, we we recorded much more than five. Uh, five much tsunami, more than five. <laughs> yeah, but the the point that uh, this is uh, scientific, uh, there is a scientific interest because uh, yep. we are recording tsunami as large as a few centimeters. Okay. Oh, uh, of course, yeah. The, 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 the one that I showed, the, 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 the more than the one meters. <laughs> okay. So yeah. uh, five, which are between uh, uh, 60 centimeters and three meters. Uh, five, let's say, moderate uh, tsunami um, but we recorded more than 60 65 uh, uh, tsunami which uh, uh, were generated by pyroclastic flows uh, and have only few centimeters and uh, it's uh, the, the 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 best uh, um, uh, the, the beautiful things of this uh, this system is that we use uh, the dispersion of the sea waves or the surface waves to filter out the signals. So we do not, actually, we do not uh, almost touch the signal. The signal is uh, as it is recorded by, by the sensor, because it's already the thickness of the seawater that is uh, behaving as a filter for us. So, and when I say it's filtering, it's filtering all the, the effect of uh, the noise produced by the, the wave at the surface and uh, is maintaining only the tsunami waves. So this is why the, uh, it's very important to decide where you put the sensor, okay? For, air, for tsunami generated by earthquake, the period is very large and uh, is uh, up to half an hour. So you can have your sensor also at 1000 meters, like in the, in the case of uh, the dart. But if you want to record tsunami produced by volcano, you have to remember that the period is shorter than the tsunami generated by earthquakes. So you cannot have your sensor very deep into, into the ocean. Otherwise, you are losing part of the signal, and then you have to recover the signal numerically. So the, the, it's a very important, once you decide to have uh, your own alert system, it's very important to decide at which depth you will put your, your, your instrument. I don't know if uh, I was clear enough. That is very concise and very clear. Thank you very much. So the beacon can give some stratification of the waves that you're saying. Yes, I'm saying that the, you, you have yeah. to ask nature to do the job, okay? yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, which and, is impossible. <laughs> and, and, and the physics is teaching us that uh, surface wave have uh, this effect, which is called dispersion of the uh, of the surface waves, and uh, the, the and, and this is this means that the, the shorter period will be filtered out 
by the, 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 the thickness of the, the water itself. But you cannot go too deep, otherwise you will lose also the tsunami. Thank you very much, Professor Pepe. I think uh, that was a very uh, amazing yeah. presentation. Yeah, and uh, the second point is also that uh, uh, vol volcanoes generally are very close to densely populated area. So you cannot lose time in giving an alert. <laughs> it's uh, uh, for probably in, in Stromboli, but uh, you, you have uh, in Indonesia the same problems. Uh, you have a densely populated area around uh, your volcanoes. So uh, you cannot, uh, you need to have an alert, which uh, a system which automatically recognizes the tsunami and then automatically gives an alert. So the system we, we have now and what we do is once the, the elastic beacons of the buoy are detecting a tsunami, this is automatically uh, passed to the Italian civil defense that without control, it's uh, sending emails, it's sending SMS, and it rings the, the sirens in Stromboli, in the Olean Islands, and in land. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Pepe. So, yeah, we do still have to work with the, you're saying that basically that we do still have to work with the authorization and all. Thank you very much. That was a very thorough presentation and I, I'm sure that everyone's listening, even though they, are, they have no basic on the uh, non-tectonic, non-seismic tsunami uh, volcanoes due to volcanoes, they can still understand what you're saying and your presentation. That was very, Great, thank you very much. Thank you. I think we're gonna move on to the third speaker and the fourth speaker. I, I believe that we're having uh, uh, praying times here in in Jakarta. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a break for fifteen minutes before Pak Semedi Husrin will present. I believe so. Is that all right, Pak Semedi? Kita salat dulu, Pak ya, lima menit, baru lanjut ke Bapak Semedi. Mau izin, Pak? Ya, silakan, Mas, boleh. Ya. Ya. Uh, ya, thank you very much everyone. Terima kasih semuanya. Kita akan break 15 menit untuk salat dulu. Jadi kita mulai lagi sekarang jam 3.20, berarti jam 3.35 ya. ya. Kita akan mulai lagi presentasinya. Oke. Okay. Mohon teman-teman yang akan menyimak, mohon di waktunya dimaksimalkan untuk langsung salat dan kita akan lanjutkan jam 3.35 menit. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Good evening, everyone. So we're gonna continue after the praying times. Uh, I hope that Miss Professor Ari Pepe and Doctor Anunziato can still uh, can still stay with us because we're gonna have a discussion and the last session. I think everyone is very eager to ask you questions about it. Thank you very much. We'll see you at 2.35. Okay. See you later.
Hello, everyone. I believe that everyone is still here after praying break. Are you ready, Pak Dr. Semedi? Hello, Pak? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna present your CV. How's everything, Pak Professor Anunziato? Doctor Anunziato, how's everything? Are you there? Yes, all is fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. How's everything, Professor Ipepe? <laughs> nice. I believe you three are colleagues, aren't you? Hello, Marusio. <laughs> Buongiorno. <Yeah. laughs> Alessandro, buongiorno. Masbo, let's present uh, Dr. Samedi's CV. Okay, I'm gonna briefly uh, mention some of the education backgrounds, positions, and experiences of Dr. Samedi. Education background, he was a bachelor from ITB and then taken the coastal engineering and port development on the Delft University of Netherlands. 2007, UNESCO IHE, and he took his PhD at the tsunami with the subject of tsunami and coastal engineering on the TU Brunswick, Germany, and also the University of Florence, Italy. So he's obviously familiar with Dr. Anunziato and Professor Ipepe. His position now is the research professor at Bruin of the Republic of Indonesia, of the, or the national research and the innovation of the agency of the Republic of Indonesia. His specialist on the geological disasters. His experiences are not limited to, on the ITB engineering consultant as an engineer, the agency of research and development R&D of marine and fisheries. He was in the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries of the Republic of Indonesia as a research scientist, and then going on to the research associate, as well as a PhD student at the TU Brunswick. And then I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> and then moving on also uh, on the Research Institute of the Coastal Resources and Vulnerability, also at KKP, Kementerian Kelautan dan Perikanan, atau the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries of the Republic of Indonesia, this time as the head of research group and program manager. And then he moved on to Bryn. Uh, uh, maybe that's all that I can uh, mention from you, Dr. Smady. There are a lot more, but maybe we don't. We haven't had the time. Uh, Dr. Smady Hussein will present about the IDSL for Krakatau, latest update and key performances. The stage and the time is yours, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning, Alessandro. Good morning, uh, Maurizio. Uh, selamat pagi, Pak Deputy. Uh, dan juga selamat pagi kepada para kapus. Selamat, eh, selamat sore, mohon maaf. Selamat sore Pak Deputi, selamat sore kepada para kapus di BMKG, selamat sore juga kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian. Uh, this afternoon, this, this opportunity, we would like to share with you the uh, progress of our uh, tsunami early warning system development in in Krakatau area. Yeah? So we call it the progress because we started uh, the development of this uh, tsunami early warning system since 2019, so it was uh, more than uh, four years ago. And under Brim, so we uh, so lucky that uh, for the year 2023, our research proposal has been approved. And then so this is our research team. So this combination of our researcher uh, in Brim and also uh, universities. So below us are those, uh, our research group member from university, like from the University of Lampung, University of Pajajaran, University of Indonesia, Pak Januar. It's now belong to the University of Indonesia, also from Bandung Institute of uh, Technology, Arjun Minas. 
And I think it's important before we start that uh, in Indonesia system, we have a uh, separation of responsibilities in, um, in, in the case of uh, tsunami uh, detection in, in Krakatau eh, or in, in the Sunda Strait. So for, as we can see that uh, from Maruzio Ripepe, uh, already explained that they more or less uh, integrate uh, the, for the monitoring of volcano uh, and also the tsunamis. But in Indonesia, we, uh, there is aspiration. Uh, for example, for the uh, volcano monitoring, it's under the Ministry of Energy and uh, Mineral Resources. Yeah, and for the tsunami, it's a uh, uh, responsibility of MNKJ and also uh, Brin. Yeah, for the sea level uh, monitoring. So uh, this afternoon, so I would like to uh, share with you about this uh, sea level monitoring for the uh, volcanic uh, island of Krakatau. But it's also important that we started this a uh, long time ago, uh, for more than four years ago, uh, since we had this uh, 2018 uh, Krakatau uh, eruption, and then also we had the tsunamis. And at that time, uh, at the national level, uh, we were all invited uh, to quickly install the tsunami or the warning system for Krakatau within uh, five months. That's what we remember last time. So then, so we, uh, anyone, yeah, anyone who had uh, capabilities, uh, capacities, uh, technically to do uh, installation quickly for the uh, system that able to detect a tsunami due to Krakatau activities uh, should uh, install immediately the system. So at that time, we uh, were one of uh, them yeah, to quickly install uh, ADSL yeah, to support uh, the existing uh, tsunami early warning system for Indonesia. And we understood also at that time that uh, we only have a tectonic uh, tsunami warning system. And then for the non-tectonic tsunami warning system, for example, due to the volcanic activities, we didn't have it. Yeah? So that's why uh, at that time we uh, quickly uh, proposed uh, DSL to be uh, installed immediately in the Krakatau area on the Sunda Strait. So this is uh, more or less the numerical simulation of uh, tsunami propagation uh, due to the activities of uh, uh, Krakatau eruption in 2018. So as you can see that uh, if you look uh, to the uh time contours that uh, we would like to have less than uh, five minutes of uh, tsunami detection it means that we need to install the system or the sensors really close to the volcanic island of uh, Krakatau. it means that uh, we have to install uh, near those uh, three islands yeah we have uh, uh, Sertung Island, we have Panjang Island, and also we have Prakat Island because those are within the uh, five minutes. And this is what uh, uh, we wanted uh, to do uh, last time. Unfortunately, at that time, we, uh, uh, we found that uh, there were no uh, telecommunication network in that area. So then uh, we uh, only successfully installed two uh, ADSL uh, sensors in nearby uh, islands, Sebesi Island, and also in uh, Marina Jambu, while waiting the possibility uh, to install uh, the system really uh, near the volcanic islands. So because it was uh, really um, not possible yeah, to install in 2019, that we installed only two in this two location. And then we spread all the the uh, instrumentation IDSL across the Indonesia yeah, in the last few years. And then we also try hard to uh, uh, do research yeah, to especially yeah, to measure the performance yeah, of the uh, IDSL, the capability of IDSL for especially for the detection of uh, tsunamis, yeah, the alerts, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, latency times, yeah, and also the gaps in CTP and so on. So there are uh, many things that we measured during uh, uh, the operation of ADSL in the past uh, three years, and we are uh, we are happy, of course, because uh, it proved that uh, the system worked quite well, yeah. And then we believe that the system can also be further implemented not only in this uh, eight location but also in other location across uh, Indonesia because Indonesia simply has. Uh, a characteristic that uh, uh, we call it near field tsunami or a tsunami that's really fast when it started uh, to be generated. Yeah? 
So in less than one hour, the uh, tsunami will arrive in the coastline uh, uh, in the Indian Sun Islands. Uh, yes, community was also involved, uh, not only uh, during the installation, but also uh, during the operation and maintenance. Yeah, this is uh, one of the uh, advantage of the system uh, implemented in Indonesia. And in 2022, and this is one of the um, important uh, milestone for the IDSL because at that time we uh, measured the tsunami uh, due to Tonga eruption, yeah, and this is also uh, in line and in agreement with the uh, shock waves measured by the BMKG sensors across Indonesia. And also, there is a video record, uh, this is from uh, January, so it shows it shows the it's all how the tsunami moves uh, entering one of the bay uh, in Indonesian islands in, in Maluku. Yeah? So this is what's uh, detected by uh, IDSL at that time and then delivering alert uh, to the system, yeah? including uh, it's uh, sent also to uh, the MKG. And okay. And then when we entered early 2022, especially in April, we had this increasing activity of uh, Krakatau uh, volcano, and then we realized also that we uh, have not installed uh, the SL near uh, Krakatoa Island. So in this uh, case, then uh, the NKG uh, moves uh, very fast uh, to coordinate uh, all ministries and agencies to work together to immediately uh, uh, install uh, the SL in, in Krakatoa Islands because at the time also in May, we will have a, a public uh, holidays, yeah. Uh, Idul Fitri. This is a very important times because lots of people will move from Java to Sumatra, and also from Sumatra to Java. The coastline along Java and also along Sumatra will be packed by uh, tourists because it's long holiday. So it's very important to provide uh, security, yeah, to the coastal community that the government will be there uh, to provide uh, protection, a sense of uh, security to the society by installing the system that able to detect a tsunami uh, much earlier. And as mentioned also by Professor Ripepe, that location is very important. So we conducted a survey a couple of times yeah, to uh, 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 the complex of uh, Krakato Islands yeah, to make sure that uh, uh, the system will work yeah, uh, perfectly and also will stay uh, uh, for, uh, for years, yeah, for a long time. And we survey all these uh, three islands and also we try the, the system also yeah using what's available at that time like this one for example we we put the uh, the device the DSL uh, for temporary and then we measure the uh, uh, the performance yeah and then uh, at the end we found this area and then uh, we also uh, get uh, support from uh, the Ministry of Telecommunication yeah to provide satellite communication yeah in this area because we had this uh, navigation tower from the Ministry of Transportation. And then we successfully installed it uh, in 1st of May um, 2022, and it's uh, working uh, until now. Yeah, And we have not only uh, ADSL here, but also I think we have uh, water level and automated, automatic weather station of KMKG is also uh, installed in this uh, platform. Yeah. So about this one, uh, I think Mr. Januar will talk later. I will skip this for uh, Mr. Januar. And now this is another important one. So we try to uh, look at the key uh, performances of the ADSL yeah, after the installation. So this is uh, the first uh, five months uh, analyzed by uh, our students, uh, Lisa from Bandung Institute of Technology. As we can see that uh, the gap is also one of uh, important indicators yeah, how to look the uh, reliability of the system. As you can see that this is the example in June, for example. On the graph uh, below, you can see that there are some red lines. Those are the gaps. Yeah? So it's very little, yes, but this is our concern because uh, this is important that uh, ADSL should work uh, uh, without uh, too much uh, uh, lagging time. Yeah. As we can see here also, we measure it that in average, it's uh, less than one hour for each month. Yeah, so yeah, 3,000 seconds is about uh, 50 minutes. Yeah, 
uh, so it means that uh, we 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 didn't look in May because May was uh, was just the first uh, installation. We had some uh, trial and errors, yeah. But in June, July, and August, we can see that uh, the data gap is not uh, that much. In average, it's less than uh, one hour, yeah, even less, I mean, but uh, thirty minutes and so. And the latency times. So this is the speed of uh, of data from the sensor to the to the server. Um, in Jarsi and also in BMKJ, yeah. as we can see here, also it's very amazing. Is uh, uh, the, the latency time in less than ten seconds, all the data is more than uh, 93 percent. Yeah, uh, in May was ninety nine percent. So it means that uh, it's very very fast. Yeah, the average, as you can see here, that latency is within uh, four second. Yeah, so within four second in average, and the data from the uh, Krakato sent uh, to the server. So this is why. Uh, it's very important that uh, we have the speed that uh, with this speed that we can use uh, uh, IDSL for the uh, uh, tsunami warning system yeah? because we need to know this really, really fast. And we have some cases, it's more than 10 seconds, yeah, and this is not that much, yeah, uh, it's uh, still below 10 uh, percent, yeah, yeah, but uh, and also uh, this is uh, still uh, very fast, yeah. Uh, as we know that this is using uh, satellite telecommunication, yeah, if using GSM normally is uh, about uh, 20 seconds of the head. So for the alerts and latency is also uh, checked, yeah, uh, this is the example in still in June, I showed to you that there are some uh, peak there, uh, and then this is related to many uh, different uh, cases, uh, luckily that we have the CCTV to confirm uh, what's going on. Uh, on, on on that alert and of course we also we can learn that this alert uh, uh, are behave uh, differently yeah? uh, Alessandro already explained why uh, the alerts uh, are created yeah and you can see also below the latency time yeah that's uh, most of the time it's really uh, really below 10 seconds yeah there are some uh, cases uh, uh, above uh, uh, 10 seconds and this one of the technical things that causing uh, the alert also yeah okay and this is the example of the cctv yeah uh, in in uh, during full moon yeah when we have clear sky even in the night we can still see the the, the coastline yeah and that's uh, during daytime it's very clear uh, what's going on there so this is uh, important uh, to validate uh, uh, in case we have extreme event uh, like tsunami and having this is is very uh, helpful. Yes. Uh, now this is the summary of the development of uh, tsunami early warning systems in 2018. Yeah, so we have uh, tsunami in 2018 in December, and then 2019 we successfully insert only uh, two units. Yeah, 2020, 2021. Yeah, we uh, practically is when kind of uh, pushing for the tsunami. We install other uh, sensors in other area, uh, mostly in the south of Java and in west of uh, Sumatra. And yeah, finally, in 1st of May 2022, uh, Indonesia successfully installed the ADSL and also the uh, automatic weather station in Rakata. Yeah. And it's uh, working until now. And yeah, there are there are so many uh, ministries, agencies, and institutions involved also. Yeah, so it's not only, uh, this is really the result of uh, cooperation, yeah? uh, both uh, national and also international. And we would like to uh, continue this uh, development, yeah, uh, beyond uh, 2022 for sure, like uh, what we are doing now. And this is one of the main issues, yeah? the telecommunication uh, coverage, uh, GSM 4D, and the labs. Side pictures, we can see that uh, this is the, the, the beginning of 2022. Yeah, we don't have any uh, 4G uh, network in Krakato, and then uh, PT Telkomsel uh, constructed a telecommunications, telecommunication tower. Yeah, in Sabesi Island in mid 2022. So now, yeah, anyone who visited uh, Krakato Island can enjoy uh, 4G uh, network. Yeah. Very, very, very nice, yeah, very quickly. This is, uh, 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 I think, uh, positive things that uh, we have 
uh, ada SL in Krakata because uh, the community, uh, coastal community fishermen and also <coughs> the uh, forest guard yeah, of Krakato also can benefit from the uh, establishment of telecommunication network in, in this area. Uh, but it's not all, it's only in the uh, northeastern part of the area, yeah, the telecommunication. Uh, in Rakata Island, we only have uh, uh, a satellite communication by uh, Bhakti from the Ministry of Telecommunication. But from for the Panjang Island and also the north part of uh, Tertung Island, we can uh, rely on uh, 4G uh, telecommunication network uh, provided by uh, PT uh, Telecomcell. So this is why we also would like uh, to install two uh, other devices yeah, in Panjang Island. Uh, because we have excellent uh, 4G network in this area. Uh, this is what we have now. The device is ready. Uh, Mr. Ardian is here from the University of Lampung. Yeah, it's still waiting temporarily there in, in Kalianda, in Santi Port. And then once we constructed the wooden platform in Panjang Island, then we will move this uh, Puma uh, into the designated uh, position. Yeah, and this is uh, yeah we did the research already for the location, but it has to be uh, uh, durable uh, enough and it's safe also uh, from the uh, explosion of uh, Krakato. Yeah, within a few few minutes. Yeah, and yeah. So uh, this is uh, uh, hopefully that in 2023 we will be able to install uh, two units. Uh, Homa in Panjang Island. In the near future, of course, we wanted to have uh, this uh, DSL all in uh, three uh, islands in Sertum, Panjang, and Rakata. In Rakata, we already have two uh, sensors, yeah? one uh, DSL and the other one belongs to DMKG, uh, yeah? and then in Panjang Island and then in Sertum Islands, all uh, within the reach of uh, less than uh, five minutes in case tsunami is generated due to the activities of crypto. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, for me. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Samedi Hussain. Uh, I think we had a lot of uh, updates uh, that had been made. Maybe uh, Professor IPP and Dr. Anunziato had something to say about the presentation of your colleague, Dr. Smedi. Dr. Anunziato, is there any response to the presentation? The wonderful presentation that had been made. I have not see, heard your voice actually, doctor. Okay, maybe we can continue to Pak Januar. Hello, Pak Januar. Hello, uh, uh, Ma Hello. Safit. I'm ready. Pak Januar, you're ready. Okay, maybe I will just present your CV in the meantime. Mas Bo, can you please share the CV of Pak Januar? Okay, I will briefly uh, mention all of the education backgrounds, positions, and experiences of Pak Januar. Pak Januar Arifin uh, had a bachelor degree uh, on the, in the, at the Udayan, Udayan University in Bali, 2012, and then pursued his master's degree at Gajah Mada University, or UGM, at 2013. And then he is now a PhD candidate uh, on the field of physics on the University of Indonesia from 2021 and ongoing until now. His position was and now is also a doctor of students and staff of BIMKG. Um, and his experience is including but not limited to the meteorological and geophysical observer of the Karangasem before and then earthquake and tsunami operation management or MANOP in BMKG 
and then also the chief of tsunami operation management subdivision and he's now a doctoral student on a staff on the IDSL and working with the closely with IDSL and so much more okay I think without further ado uh, let's give this stage to Pak Jano Arifin the time is yours thank you very much okay thank you uh, Mas Afid. Uh let me uh, share my uh, presentation Yeah, it's it's presented already. Perfect. Yeah, you can continue. Thank you. Everybody uh, can see the, the presentation. Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you very much, Excellency uh, uh, Deputy of uh, Geophysics, uh, Head of uh, Earthquake and Tsunami uh, Center, Pak Dariono, uh, uh, Mr. Alessandro. Uh, Anunziato, uh, Professor Maurizio, Pak Smedi, and other participants. Uh, this is a good opportunity for me to uh, uh, deliver the current development status in this year uh, about what we have done in BMKG related to tsunami atypical monitoring through a system what we have developed called INATNT. INATNT calls in called uh, in, a, uh, in Indonesia tsunami non-tectonic uh, tsunami monitoring uh, and we have uh, developed the system uh, since uh, two years ago. Uh, next uh, uh, for the background we know uh, the latest two uh, tsunamis uh, atypical tsunamis that happened in 2018 uh, triggered uh, or become our inspiration uh, that uh, some tsunami, uh, uh, atypical tsunami, uh, although it's uh, that's uh, rare, but can be dangerous. Uh, the first case, for example, for the uh, uh, Palu uh, tsunami in, uh, in the Palu Bay, uh, uh, we know that uh, based on the evidence, uh, the tsunami struck the city uh, uh, less than five minutes or uh, about 3.5 minutes. So uh, the, the tsunami, a typical tsunami can be really fast and uh, can, uh, even uh, can uh, precede the, the, uh, our uh, warning, uh, warning information from uh, BMKG. That's become difficult because uh, the, the tsunami uh, happened in, in a very local uh, area. And then the second uh, case that uh, we have considered, we know the tsunami in the Sunda Street in 22 December 2018. Uh, BMKG uh, took at least one hour to, to, to uh, ensure and uh, release that the tsunami uh, that's uh, the the height the high tides uh, anomalous high tides were uh, were reported by the local uh, uh, people in in, in the industry comes uh, that that uh, uh, come from the tsunami uh, from the Krakatau uh, eruption that's because uh, yeah that's uh, very big difficult because the tsunami uh, spread without uh, preceded uh, preceded by uh, any significant earthquake we know the the, the our uh, uh, tsunami level system existing uh, uh, were designed uh, just for the tectonic earthquake so uh, the in, the in this case uh, uh, the the tsunami level system cannot could not uh, effective uh, enough to detect uh, the tsunami that uh, the, uh, in, the, in this in this in this case, 
So, Bess, uh, or regarding the, to the latest case, we can conclude that tsunami typical can be uh, very fast, and even in some cases uh, can happen of, uh, and spread very very silent. That's uh, uh, we think that we need additional uh, system that can uh, detect the, the tsunami uh, directly be, uh, from the uh, sea level observation. Uh, just as a uh, complementary uh, existing system, uh, our tsunami warning system. So uh, we try to formulate the objectives of the our uh, uh, United Entity system. We try uh, to state the at least three objectives we have uh, we have uh, reached. The first one we have. Uh, in our development, we 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 have vision uh, how to integrate sea level observation data from the internal and external resources or stakeholders internal into a single integrated system and uh, display. Because we know before in a uh, this uh, in a TNT or develop, we have uh, supplied uh, many uh, GUIs uh, or uh, uh, many uh, monitoring screen from many stakeholders that. Uh, become uh, uh, that make our operator hard to uh, uh, observe uh, through uh, many uh, many uh, screens. So we want uh, there there is a uh, one integrated system that can make operator easily uh, become a standing watcher to detect a directory through the mariogram data every change uh, sea level change through that uh, display. Uh, and then the second uh, objective, we also want to provide sea level anomaly automatic detection facility through meridian data. As it's up for order operator, yes, uh, as I mentioned before, tsunami can struck uh, in some case uh, uh, silently. So uh, uh, by provide these facilities, it can help the uh, our uh, operator to. Uh, to increase their awareness. So if uh, it, it can help the operator to, to uh, wake up uh, early uh, uh, when uh, some anomaly uh, detected and uh, doing some uh, uh, appropriate steps to ensure uh, whether this is a tsunami or not. And then uh, the, the last, we also want to provide supporting system and SOP for non tectonic tsunami warning system. That's uh, now in uh, ongoing in in our in BMKG uh, to provide uh, SOP uh, for the tectonic tsunami warning system, and uh, and we also cooperate with many stakeholders like PVMBG, for example, so can strengthen our uh, our awareness uh, to this uh, kind of disaster. Yes, uh, this is a definition of our uh, inattentive system. Inattentive system uh, is an integrated system that functions to detect sea level change. Anomalies that indicate a tsunami is recorded by sea level of sensor on by BIG, BP, uh, BPPT, and KKP. Now BPT and KKP uh, merge uh, in a, a new institution called BRAIN. Uh, uh, then, uh, yeah, the preset of INATT will improve the performance of the INATT system in detecting tsunamis caused by tectonic and uh, non-tectonic sources. We can see here, uh, we retrieve uh, data from many stakeholders, sea level uh, providers, and uh, we retrieve by many ways. Uh, mostly comes uh, from the API that were they provided to us integrated to our inattentive system. And we also provide uh, automatic uh, detection, especially for no, for uh, non, uh, for sensor that were, were not equipped by, by its own detection, uh, like uh, tight gauges and our uh, water level, uh, maritime water level, or uh, our tsunami gauge. And, uh, and, uh, uh, the 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 server in the TNT 
sends the meridian data and also the alert notification to our client monitoring. And uh, we also uh, uh, connect to our uh, to our simulation system when when some uh, when some anomaly uh, or a verified anomaly of course uh, related to the tsunami uh, a typical tsunami we can send uh, uh, what we call uh, 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 surface level one uh, uh, dissemination information issue. This is a uh, uh, integrated system frame monitoring sensor from Inetius uh, institution. Uh, 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 we have uh, at least uh, five uh, kind of uh, uh, sensor. The first one uh, provided by BMKG, we have uh, tsunami gauge. Uh, tsunami gauge comes from the uh, earthquake and tsunami center. Uh, we have five uh, for now. At the moment, we have five stations, uh, mostly in the southern part of Java, and this uh, tsunami gate. Now, uh, now with tsunami gate uh, already, uh, we have our, uh, already successfully increased the sampling rate. We now, now we we can increase the sampling rate to the uh, three uh, thirty seconds. I'm sorry, we we haven't uh, updated in this slide yet. But uh, at the moment, the status navigate, we can uh, successfully increase to uh, 30 seconds. And then for the, we also uh, retrieve data from the automatic weather station. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we have uh, many uh, automatic weather station in several ports in Indonesia. And we retrieve uh, especially for the sea level uh, sensor data as well as the uh, barometer uh, or air pressure sensor. Uh, we have uh, at least 35 uh, sensor uh, from EWS uh, with uh, one minute sampling rate and uh, with the same uh, transmit rate. And then from the BRIN, uh, we also retrieve from ADSL. ADSL uh, also provided uh, from GRC, from uh, Pak Anunziato, thank you, Pak uh, Alessandro Anunziato, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, some kind of light tight gates, in my opinion, and it's a very uh, robust and affordable. This IDSL, uh, we retrieve uh, eleven uh, ADSL, including the Puma, Puma uh, local. Some kind of ADSL, but uh, or developed by uh, the local uh, university incorporated with the Blin with Pak Samedi. Uh, we also we also we also integrate from one station from the uh, Padang Cermin in Lampung. We also retrieve the, the data. This is very I think this uh, very uh, good equipment because beside the sea level sensor we also retrieve the CCTV uh, CCTV images uh, and then uh, yeah we beside the IDSL from Brin we also retrieve data from tsunami buoy and the cable based tsunometer. For the tsunami buoy, we have we we have retrieved seven uh, data from uh, seven sensors, and the CBT we have retrieved uh, two uh, stations, two sensor. Uh, CBT uh, two sensor uh, comes from the one site in Labuan Bajo. Uh, uh, this is the uh, distribution map of. Um, all of the sea level uh, uh, station or sensor. Now, uh, last year we also extend our uh, coverage uh, of uh, monitoring, uh, monitoring coverage. We also extend uh, our monitoring, especially focus on uh, uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, as we know, BMKG one of the TSP tsunami service. Uh, uh, provider with Australia and India, uh, so uh, we can, uh, uh, based on, uh, regarding on that reason, we also try to retrieve uh, water level sensor from outside, from outside uh, Indonesian region, especially in, in uh, from Indonesian region, especially from the 
mostly from the uh, for from the Indian Ocean to the West Pacific uh, consists of a uh, uh, Dutch Noah. We retrieved uh, 30, 33 uh, sensors, and uh, from the is the the majority comes from the Tate Gate IOC 165, and we also retrieve a uh, seven uh, Tate Gates data from Incoys. Here is the here are the uh, algorithm for the TDA. Uh, Inatenti actually retrieve uh, external uh, detection from the sum of uh, the sensors uh, such as EDSL. EDSL has as uh, Alessandro uh, uh, explained in the previous session. Okay, you are using a, a spatial detection uh, and we uh, also uh, retrieve the notification from the, the from the data when when some anomaly uh, happen and we also retrieve a notification uh, or tsunami alert from a buoy from the ina buoy as well as as well as the dot buoy and for the station that are, are that uh, that uh, have an its own uh, TDA. We also develop uh, our detection based on HTLTA as we uh, we have done uh, uh, quite similar like uh, Professor Morizio uh, done. We, we also uh, uh, quite similar the procedure. We also doing some the spikes uh, procedure to to prevent gap before we treat or implement the STLTA detection in uh, based on uh, our uh, uh, test or simulation uh, through uh, safer cases historical case it uh, was uh, successfully detect uh, well detect the, the, the tsunami anomaly here is the in TNT GUIs uh, we have uh, at least uh, six uh, GUIs is the uh, the GUIs uh, we adopted from the uh, SESCOMPI, you know, SESCOMPI is a, a, a seismic monitoring uh, system. We 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 have uh, adopt many uh, feature, many uh, uh, GUIs uh, uh, object, and uh, and uh, how to display the meridian data sets like just like a seismogram data. Uh, based on the Hungatonga's eruption that. Uh, cause uh, air blast. We also integrate the barometer or air pressure, so we can uh, probably we hope we can detect not only uh, for the direct tsunami we can detect the meteor tsunami come from uh, or generated by the air blast or shock wave from some volcanic uh, uh, eruption. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, unfortunately, we our AEWS uh, uh, station already equipped by the real time near real time uh, uh, air pressure uh, sensor, so we can retrieve uh, the the air pressure data. Just uh, uh, like for example, like in uh, the Rakata Island, we also uh, deploy. AWS uh, station uh, 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 next to uh, the IDSL in the, in the, the Rakata Island, so uh, we uh, so we can get many parameters uh, to uh, uh, to detect a tsunami, and then uh, we also retrieve, as I mentioned, with a, with a coastal cam from IDSL Puma, and then. The newest we also retrieve from our tsunami gate, and uh, in the future, uh, BIG also state the, they uh, they wants to su support the the tight gate gate data by the uh, uh, like uh, this uh, uh, CCTV uh, equipment. So we can uh, probably in, in in the future we can get more and more uh, CCTV data. Here is uh, the uh, example uh, uh, alert that uh, sent from IDSL data in Prigi, alert from the case of the meteor tsunami in 15 January 2022. 
uh, caused by Humatonga volcanic uh, eruption. And here is uh, a American play playback of a simulation how our internal TDA in a TNT detects tsunami. This uh, the, uh, I, I, I sh uh, show for example from the case of tsunami Palu, uh, 28 uh, uh, September 2018, or uh, detected in Pantolan uh, Tate Gages. Tate Gage. Now, here is the playback. We can see uh, the document. I'm better now. Yeah, everybody can see here how the the, the uh, uh, yellow uh, yellow line marks the the this onset. This uh, how the United States detect the uh, tsunami. Okay, I think that's all from my side. Uh, uh, I, I return the session to the host or moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fajanwar. That was a very uh, comprehensive presentation explaining the updates of the uh, Indonesian non-tectonic tsunami early warning system. And I'd like to make some points, key points that I've already compiled from your presentation. I hope that I got it right. First one is that BMKG took at least one hour to release the early warning system of the sea wave on December 2018. And it was not effective enough in this case. And regarding the latest case, we can conclude that tsunami can happen very fast. And Indonesia need additional system to detect the tsunami non-seismic better. We then tried to formulate, I mean, in a TNT with your team, try to formulate the objective of the INA TNT. There are three objectives. The first one is that to integrate the sea level observation data. The second one to provide sea level anomaly through detection facility. The third one is to provide supporting system and SOP for the non-tectonic tsunami WS or warning system. And the second one is that this INA TNT will provide performance boost for the INA tools in detecting the TNT aside from the tectonic tsunami. Integration of five sensors from PAG, PAGT of BMKG has tsunami gauge. gauge. Uh, the PUSMAR of BMKG has the AWL or automatic water level. BPPT Brin had the IDSL for the wet water lef level and also tsunami B. And also the cable based tsunami, tsunami, tsunami meter or CBT. As you've already mentioned before, uh, also, with the help of, uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, with the help of Dr. Anunziato, a robust and portable, including the Puma tight gauge, is also existing to support providing the not all, not only the sea level but also the CCTV to monitor the situation in the sites. The CBT sensor is present at Labuan Bajo. Uh, is there any more? Uh, three, the third point is that the algorithm of the INA TNT has the basis from TDA IDSL with the paper published by Dr. Anunziato as the basis also. The INA TNT has quite the same procedure to detect with the, with the method. And the fourth one is that based on the Hunga Tunga eruption causing the air blast, hopefully INA TNT can also detect the presence of the air blast or the shock waves. Volcanic blast, for example, in the Arakata Island. And then the five, the fifth uh, points is that more CCTV are needed to observe the situations in the sites. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, I mean, Pa Januar for the presentations. Is there any more that you can add to the points that I mentioned? Yeah, actually, for the TDA, uh, I have done uh, quite similar with uh, Professor Morizu. Uh, research. Okay, so there is an original publishing method that you've done. Uh, sorry for if 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 the uh, sentence is not correct. Uh, thank you very much. I believe that that concludes our presentations, and we're we're going to move on to the next sessions, which is the discussion sessions. For everyone who has the questions, you can. As I've mentioned before in the rules, you can uh, put it in the chat room or you can just raise hand and ask questions. If, if it's the question, if the question is Indonesia, uh, we can help 
uh, with the questions. And also, we had two questions already from Bang Musa and Ibu Suci. Uh, for the reminder, for everyone, for the participants, uh, we had already put the uh, the the link for the for your uh, presence in this. So you can attendance form is there there's an attendance form that you can fill in for the certifications okay then let's move on to uh the first questions from ibu suci hello ibu suci yeah thank you hafiz mm. thank you for moderating the um, the presentation session very attractive so my question is